Hello and welcome to the Lobster Pot, aka Day Two of Product Earth, um, kind of. <laughs> so we're continuing the seminars that didn't get to, people didn't get to present because obviously the event was cancelled. But we have now we have um, David Hartigan from Hemp Heroes. How you doing, David? You're right. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me on. No, yeah, not at all, not at all. And today you're going to be telling us all about the potential benefits of CBD for pets, as we can clearly see on screen. But uh, tell us a little bit more first about Hemp Heroes and what you're doing, and then we'll get into it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, so I suppose I've been in the kind of hemp and CBD space for about seven years now. Um, and kind of one of the areas I suppose we kind of explored in, in I suppose, a larger detail is around CBD and the potential benefits for pets. So how I actually kind of fell into the space, and um, one of my good friends, his dog actually suffered severely with arthritis and um, to the point that the vet actually put him on tramadol painkillers. And I suppose since now speaking to a lot of vets, um, a lot of them have told me that tramadol is quite ineffective for dogs. It's usually much more beneficial um, for cats as a pain relief. So lo and behold, essentially the, the tablets didn't work and the vet said, look, there's not really much more we can do. And a friend of his at the time actually said, look, would you try CBD? And it worked actually so effectively that he got an extra two years out of his dog. Wow. So um, that was kind of around the kind of the start of, I suppose, Hemp Heroes. And we kind of looked at it and said, okay, well, there's real value here for pets as well as humans. So I think we should explore this further. So um, yeah, I suppose we kind of originally started like most brands as kind of a private label, white label product. And then over the last number of years, we've essentially brought all of our manufacturing in-house. So um, Hemp Heroes is essentially an organic seed to shelf hemp company. Very, very cool. cool. And you're based in Dublin. Where do you sell to? Is it kind of just in Ireland or the UK as well? Um, so Ireland, UK, and then kind of mainland Europe is kind of the markets that we're at now. And um, we are kind of looking further afield in terms of kind of, I suppose, outside of Europe into kind of the US and even kind of further afield. But um, yeah, kind of close to home right now as we kind of grow the market. So um, ideally, the UK would be kind of our next protocol. And we're working on some kind of unique products for that market. Very, very cool. Cool. Excellent. Well, tell us a little bit more. Let's uh, get into your seminar and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So I suppose an introduction of myself, um, I'm the CEO and founder of Hemp Heroes. So we're Europe's leading seed shelf hemp company. So essentially what that means is we bring in raw organic hemp and we work with organic hemp farmers and then we manufacture the finished goods. So 90% um, of hemp and CBD products in Europe and essentially globally are white label or private label. So what that means is they actually don't manufacture their products and um, a third party will manufacture on their behalf. So you've a small handful of large producers, mainly in kind of UK, mainland Europe, who produce the bulk of the industry's products. So we're kind of a little bit different in the fact that we actually do our own in-house manufacturing. And um, in terms of kind of expertise, I'd be one of the leading experts on hemp and CBD in Europe. And um, I currently sit on the board for the Cannabis Trade Association. So the CTA are a brilliant organization, which are a nonprofit, and um, they're essentially trying to lobby and um, governments both in Ireland, UK and internationally to really, I suppose, recognize the hemp and the kind of growing cannabis sector. And prior yes. to getting into this space, um, I actually um, spent six and a half years working as a business consultant um, in PwC. So um, I suppose that's where kind of my business skills come from. And um, I have a master's in management consultancy. Very, very cool. Excellent. Now I know the CTA, that's uh, Sean America, right? So yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I sit on the board and kind of represent Ireland and um, kind of head up the kind of pet side of the, I suppose, the CTA. And um, we're trying to, I suppose, lobby the UK government, in particular the Veterinary Cannabis Society in the UK, to kind of take a stronger look at, I suppose, the potential benefits of CBD for pets and remove it away from being a veterinary medicine. Very cool. Um, so then just kind of like to give people a bit of a background, because like any time we do events, there's always such a misconception on hemp, I suppose, and actual marijuana. So they are from the same family of plants, but they're essentially on completely opposite spectrums. So um. I suppose our business is solely focused on the hemp side of things. So we're all the low THC side. Um, so hemp is obviously genetically low in THC and it's high in CBD. Um, I suppose why it's gained popularity in recent times um, is because of its non-intoxicating effects. And um, of course, because it's a lot more legal to sell. And um, so hemp is it, essentially legal in most European countries, US, and there's very few, I suppose, countries more so in the Middle East where hemp is still unfortunately illegal. Um, and I think that's a lot to do with the misconceptions because it's so closely related to actual, I suppose, marijuana. So um, marijuana be high in THC, so you're talking like 20, 30% plus. It's low in CBD. Obviously, it's psychoactive. It gets you high. And unfortunately, it is illegal in most, most countries. Um, so the way I kind of describe this to people is hemp is kind of your non-alcoholic beer. And I suppose marijuana is your kind of high alcohol vodka, essentially. 
And um, so like they're completely on opposite spectrums. And um, so that's why obviously any sort of CBD product won't get you high essentially. Um, then in terms of like CBD, so what it is, um, I suppose that the acronym gets thrown around a lot. So um, it's the short name for cannabidiol and it was actually first discovered in 1940. So um, it is only one of over 113 different types of cannabinoids. So think of these as kind of like building blocks. And um, I suppose why it's became so popular is because of its non-psychoactive effects and the potential benefits it has, which we'll go through in a minute. Um, and then obviously it's very safe to consume. It's non-addictive, it's non-intoxicating. And the World Health, Health Organization have studied it in detail and shown it essentially has next to no, um, I suppose, risk of abuse. Um, and like for humans, the actual toxicity level is extremely high. So you need to consume in around 20,000 milligrams of CBD in one single dose to have a toxic effect, which generally equates to about 600 mils of CBD oil, which I think most people would probably find hard to consume even 100 mils. No, absolutely and again it's um there are all different types of um i know cannabinoids and things like that but cbd is the one that i suppose is most consumer kind of you know evident yeah, isn't it? it's the sort of thing you see in the uh, holland and barrett the kind of health food stores and things like that so i think more and more people are becoming sort of familiar as it as a kind of wellness supplement for, for humans aren't they so yeah definitely and then another thing as well i suppose and um, there is a big educate edu um, education piece, but like there are actually three different types of CBD. So unfortunately, a lot of people kind of maybe lack the education on this part, and they think everything is the same. So the kind of three, I suppose, categories would be your full spectrum. So this is basically your whole plant, and you can see here on the screen we've kind of a range of building blocks here. So like you've CBC, CBD, CBDA, CBG, and um, trace elements of THC. And in the whole plant, um, you've also your terpenes, you have your vitamins, your minerals, your flavonoids, you have everything. So this is essentially the most effective um, type of, I suppose, CBD product because it has the whole range and it creates a synergy effect. So it's essentially kind of a two plus two equals six. Um, and as you kind of go down the different types, essentially what you're doing is you're removing elements. So you're removing some of these cannabinoids or building blocks. So like... One of the dead giveaways usually for a full spectrum oil is it's usually very dark in color and um, all of the oils that we produce are cold pressed full spectrum so um we essentially try to retain as many of these building blocks and cannabinoids as possible to have i suppose the best outcome for our customer base and um, the next level down is your broad spectrum and essentially what they've done here is they've actually removed that trace element of thc and um, usually this is done through heating and um, so essentially the thc is burned off and um, now unfortunately with that process you do actually, I suppose, damage or convert some of the other cannabinoids. So it does make it a little bit less effective. And um, so it wouldn't be as effective as a full spectrum, but I suppose it's the next best thing. And then the last kind of type is CBD isolate, which is essentially pure CBD isolated. So you can see here, it's only one molecule. It's basically one type of building block. And this is the purest version of, I suppose, CBD. Now, usually when people say it's the purest version, you would think it was the best. But in this case, it's actually counterintuitive. So CBD isolate is the least effective of the three types because all of them other benefits in terms of the other cannabinoids, your terpenes, your vitamins, your minerals, you've actually stripped them away from the product. And by doing that, you make it a lot less effective. So in some studies, they've actually shown CBD isolate is about 20 to 30% as effective as a full spectrum. Really? Um, so you need a lot more of it. And there are a lot of studies being done in terms of the, I suppose, toxicology side and the long-term safety um, of CBD isolate. So um, full spectrum CBD has this kind of protective mechanism where isolate doesn't really have that. So a lot more studies do need to be done. And I know in the UK, um, the kind of recommended daily dosage um, was actually brought down to 10 milligrams of CBD isolate per day um, due to kind of the unknown, I suppose, risk factors about long-term use of it because it is so, um, I suppose, refined and processed. Yeah. Was it 70 milliliters before and then it was, yeah. Then the, yeah, so it was 70 milligrams and then they brought it down to 10, I think, at the moment. Yes. Um, now, it's a non-binding kind of recommendation. Um, mm. And I think one of the studies I've seen recently said that it could possibly be more around kind of 70 and a half. But even at 70 and a half for a CBD isolate, that kind of dosage probably isn't going to be effective to really see, a, a, I suppose, a, a huge impact. You, you need to be talking like 50 milligrams or more when it comes to isolate where full spectrum you can use a lot less and essentially right. get a lot more bang for your book is that because i mean in terms of like we talk about the entourage effect is that essentially the same 
the effect here that we're talking about with the full spectrum. Because... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's that entourage synergy effect. And we actually have done a cancer research project um, at one of the largest universities in Ireland. And they were using a CBD isolate on cancer cells. And then we actually procured them a CBDA isolate to compare the two. And the CBDA isolate actually performed a little bit better. But when we used our full spectrum, um, only about a third of the amount was needed in comparison to the isolates which technically proved the entourage effect that it's a lot more effective at lower dosages. Um, so a lot more research needs to be done at this, but like I think in Australia they're doing a similar study with mm -hmm. epilepsy in children and they gave them isolate and full spectrum and the full spectrum essentially blew the isolate out of the park. Mm -hmm. um, then I suppose more so on to pets, I suppose how it works. So the reason why CBD works and I suppose cannabinoids in general in all, um, I suppose cats, dogs, horses, elephants, is every mammal has an endocannabinoid system. And essentially it's this system which interacts with cannabinoids and it kind of produces these different effects. So generally speaking, the research suggests that the endocannabinoid system helps regulate kind of functions like pain, sleep, mood, appetite, inflammation. And that's why I suppose CBD and other cannabinoids have such a wide kind of effect across a number of systems. So in terms of its safety profile, and um, luckily there have been some studies done here and they've actually proven that CBD is well tolerated for cats and dogs and has a very high safety profile. So back in 2022, Mars Peck here, who would be one of the largest, I suppose, I suppose, pet businesses in the world, and they proved it was safe for long-term use in dogs. So in this study, they gave 40 dogs um, four milligrams of CBD per kilo of body weight. And essentially they proved that it was a safe for long-term use. Um, then in terms of kind of potential benefits, there's probably three areas which I suppose show the most promising results. So pain and inflammation, anxiety would be second, and then thirdly would be epilepsy. Now, there are other areas, but probably a little bit less research in terms of nausea, skin issues, um, and kind of different areas. Um, so in terms of pain, we've actually been quite fortunate in that we've started a study in this area. So for the past two years, um, we've worked with uh, the UC Veterinary Hospital so um, the UC Veterinary Hospital would be Ireland's largest veterinary university. And um, we've done, <clears throat> we done a study with them to essentially explore the potential benefits of oral cannabinoids for chronic pain related to osteoarthritis. So the way the study was actually set up was that it was a randomized double blind placebo and it consisted of two phases. So in the first phase, um, it was essentially four weeks of either a cold pressed organic CBD and with salmon oil or they would get hemp seed oil. And essentially half the dogs would get our placebo, half would get our um, actual CBD oil. They would be on it for four weeks. Then there would be a four week washout period when essentially they would get nothing. And then they would flip then and obviously get the reverse. So this essentially meant every, I suppose, pet in the, in the study got our CBD and got our placebo. And the four week washout period essentially meant that there was no cross contamination. So um, we done this with a study of I think about 15 dogs. And the idea is actually to bring this to a larger scale study, but the results were actually very impressive. So um, using the Helsinki pain index, um, essentially the dogs who received the placebo had a medium pain of 11 compared to the placebo of 14.5. So a 3.5 difference. Um, and then using the Liverpool method, we actually seen a probably larger kind of, um, I suppose, reduction in pain. So the dogs who received the CBD had a 16.5 compared to a medium of 22. So again, that's, a 6.5 difference and um, so Let essentially across the board we proved that dogs mm -hmm. who received the cbd had significant less pain in comparison to the placebo very good i mean let me just ask because you said before you got cbd oil and it said hemp seed oil now hemp just to, just to kind of explain the difference cbd obviously is the uh, the, the cannabinoid you have but hemp seed oil i mean obviously that comes from the same plant but if that was the placebo in this it didn't have sorry placebo didn't have any cbd per se in it is that right or yeah exactly yeah so essentially the hemp seed oil would have been just made from the seeds and um, any sort of um cbd levels there would be a very small trace element so they'd be so small that they'd be negligent um, right so and again the, the actual cbd itself will come from the the flower and um, from essentially the whole plant right so okay we, yeah so everything um and that's why we use the hemp seed oil because essentially it's similar in looking in color and um, mm. So, because we didn't want the actual, I suppose, the owners of the pets to see a noticeable difference between the two products, right. um, and obviously kind of a similar smell and everything. But um, obviously, one has high levels of CBD; the other one has essentially only trace elements. Okay. Cool. 
Um, so the study went extremely well and essentially we'll have a paper published um, later this year. And the idea is actually to use this to, I suppose, launch a second study, which would be a much larger scale study with ideally probably 50 to probably maybe 80 dogs and um, to really kind of like, I suppose, get the hard data that we need. Um, but again, very promising. And because of, I suppose, the benefit and I suppose the effectiveness of this study, we've actually got a second study. Um, but like, here's just some of the an anecdotal feedback. So um, we literally have 300 plus five star reviews on Google and plenty of them are for, I suppose, joint issues, pain and inflammation, especially for, I suppose, dogs who have hip dysplasia, ligament damage, um, and possibly even kind of arthritis. So it is extremely effective. Um, but on the anxiety side, this is also something that we're kind of exploring. So back in 2023, Mars Peckhair actually conducted a study um, to see if CBD does have an effect on reducing stress in dogs. And with this study, they kind of took a similar approach, I suppose, to the safety kind of study where they gave dogs either a placebo or a CBD capsule of four milligrams per kilo. And essentially they were given it before, um, I suppose, a stressing event. So it was either a separation event or car travel. And what they found is the dogs who were fed, um, received the CBD, um, basically seeing them were significantly less stressed, less sad, tense and uncomfortable from, I suppose, like a point of view of actually observing them. But more interestingly, they actually took blood samples and they've seen a significant reduction in cortisol levels. So they actually seen that the CBD actually impacted their overall stress hormone. And actually that was one of the ways it had a calming effect on the dogs who re received the CBD in comparison to the placebo. So I suppose this is quite interesting that if it can actually affect cortisol levels and reduce cortisol, and um, this has huge implications, I suppose, for nearly all mammals. Um, so off the back of, I suppose, what Mars Peckhair have done, we've actually kind of done a kind of similar study. And what we've done now is we've actually started an anxiety study with the veterinary college in UCD, and we're going to be measuring cortisol levels. But instead of giving um, a single dose of CBD, we're actually giving three doses of CBD or placebo, and then blood samples will be taken um, as part of the um, oncology work that dogs will be receiving. So that way, essentially, um, the blood samples that we're taking won't be unnecessarily taken. They'll be taken already as part of their treatment program. And we'll be measuring the cortisol levels also, as well as doing, I suppose, some kind of um, behavioral tests to see if they're less uncomfortable or less stressed. And this study is running at the moment, and I think it has about 60 dogs um, in the process. So we should have some results on this study probably early next year. <laughs> um, in terms of, again, anecdotal feedback, we're actually quite fortunate. So we work with 12 animal rescues across Ireland. And um, one of the rescues that we work with is the DSPCA. So they're the oldest animal shelter in Ireland. And um, they've, I suppose, anecdotally seen the benefits for the dogs in the rescue for anxiety. So they use it in their shelters and find um, when they do use it, the dogs acclimatize a lot better and um, they're a lot more comfortable until they get adopted. Um, so then kind of, I suppose the last area that's quite interesting is epilepsy. So um, in 2019, a study was conducted by Colorado State University and um, basically see if CBD can help reduce seizures or the frequency. So um, this study again was quite a, I suppose, a small scale study and um, was only conducted over 12 weeks and folks in 26 client owned dogs. Um, and as a result of the study, they actually seen a 33% reduction in the frequency of seizures um, of the dogs who received CBD in comparison to placebo. Um, now, ideally additional research is needed around this and it is something that we actually are looking to do. Um, the issue with, I suppose, studying epilepsy in dogs is if a dog is on medication already and then you give them CBD, um, essentially it's very hard to, I suppose, um, articulate or really understand if it's the CBD that's working or it's just the medication. So for this study, we're probably going to be looking for a cohort of dogs which are completely drug resistant. And that means essentially no other I suppose, pharmaceutical drugs have worked. They'll be given our CBD and a placebo essentially and see if it has an impact. So this is something that we're hoping to kind of explore into probably next year. Um, but just to ask, they can take both. Like if they're on one medication, they can still have CBD oil. Is that right? Or do, do they yeah. need to so, one? Yeah. So they can definitely take both. It's more so from an actual, I suppose, study point of view and that it, yeah. it would be essentially a bias that if we were to okay. do a study with 10 yeah. dogs who are on medication and given cbd obviously it kind of opens up the door to okay well maybe it's just the medication work and the cbd does nothing and um, 
So ideally, we'd want a cohort That's of dogs right. where all medication hasn't worked, mm -hmm. and then we give them CBD. And obviously, if there is an impact on reduction in frequency of seizures or complete stop of seizures, well, then we'd have a good kind of case study there to say, okay, well, the CBD must be having some sort of an effect. Absolutely. Yeah. And then actually something really interesting is the kind of use of CBD in exotic animals. So I have spoke to a number of vets kind of about this. Um, so I spoke to a veterinary practice in Australia who would actually use that on exotic birds like parrots who generally when they're stressed, they actually can overpluck themselves and they use it to such a good effect that it actually helped the, the parrot in this case. And um, equally in Poland, there was a zoo who was rumored to be actually using CBD on elephants to reduce anxiety. And um, as part of the breeding program. You don't see that many elephants in Poland, I guess, but um, yeah, it's it's in the zoos, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> in the zoos. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, not wild elephants. <laughs> What's interesting? Yeah. Again, you mentioned uh, mammals mostly, but birds as well. Is that right? Have any? Yeah, CS? no. It, it seems to actually have an impact on birds as well. Um, so I've spoken to a couple of vets who've actually used it on exotic birds to pretty good effect. Mm. Um, and then I was only speaking to um a vet over at um in the zoo earlier this year in germany and she's actually used on a tiger for arthritis and mm. um it's worked extremely well which i was kind of surprised about um now obviously depending on the size of i suppose the animal you're going to yeah. need a lot more in terms of the dosage but um it does seem to impact i suppose across the board and i think we actually had an inquiry only last week um from a vet who was interested in actually using it in primates um for joint issues mm. yeah so i suppose there are kind of a number of different aspects and i suppose potential kind of avenues here where it could be used and um, and then lastly as i kind of mentioned and um, we work with 12 animal rescues across ireland and essentially they actually get our products for free as part of our giving back program so anecdotally we have a huge amount of feedback there to i suppose attest to the potential benefits of cbd for i suppose a wide range of pets and um, there are a lot more studies that need to be done i suppose that's why we're trying to lead the front on this and i suppose get these studies started and explore the potential benefits because i think across the board there are a number of pets both i suppose companion pets like cats and dogs and even larger scale animals i suppose as you've seen like tigers and elephants who could potentially benefit from cbd and um, so that's actually everything so and um, if you have any questions happy to go through no yeah i think um no, that all makes sense and i think it, it's really interesting to sort of think of it in terms of all kinds of different animals really and the impact that it can have i mean again i guess we always think in terms of uh human beings and you know what you know the effect on our own health and things like that yeah definitely but it's, but it's interesting to sort of see it being applied to, to animals and thinking it can well again it, it would just kind of follows really that it, it has that sort of impact on on humans that you know and it wouldn't apply to other mammals and and i guess birds as well but i guess in terms of sort of other types of creatures do they not have endocannabinoid systems say like reptiles or you know i mean i don't, yeah. I don't know about that yeah. aspect of it but yeah yeah to be perfectly honest i actually don't know the answer to the question i just know from a mammal's perspective um, yes. all mammals definitely have an endocannabinoid system and mm. um, i've heard of people using on reptiles and um, no i don't know to what effect so it's probably an area that probably needs to be explored more and again like the endocannabinoid system like every mammal every human has one yet it's something we're not even taught in school like yeah. if you said someone in the street like you have your respiratory system you have all these different systems and if you ask them do you have an endocannabinoid system they'd probably look at you like your 10 heads and say like is that something you just made up what's that like yeah so, no, absolutely it's, yeah. it's I mean, we've been to sort of um been to sort of a mccs like medical cannabis clinician kind of yeah. workshops and sort of observed what they're talking about and you know you're very qualified doctors but you know it's cannabis 101 this is the ecs this is this you yeah. know and just like you say it's something they're not taught as part of their medical practice it's not yeah definitely and like especially vets like vets especially i find in mainland europe there are obviously a few kind of um i suppose outliers who are kind of i suppose up to date with where cannabinoids and I suppose mammals and how it can be used in pets but like most vets have no idea about how cbd works within mammals or within pets and the potential benefits and if anything they're probably a little bit afraid and they think oh cannabis like is there not a toxicity issue there like even with high thc cannabis and um, there are i suppose vets in the us who have prescribed medical cannabis for pets and mm -hmm. it does have a therapeutic effect mm -hmm. and even at that level the toxicity still is quite high and um, like I suppose you always hear the stories of a dog getting a high THC edible and obviously they'll be quite lethargic and they won't exactly be running around the house. 
but um the chance of actually having a fatal effect is quite mm -hmm. slim unless they yep. consume it like in a huge amount so yes. um generally speaking yeah it's kind of just rest and they're fine so there are even benefits benefits for kind of higher thc products for i suppose pets who are going through cancer treatments and different kind of other issues yeah no absolutely and again i guess it, like you say what kind of applies to us also applies to uh to animals too in that regard isn't it really when you think of yeah it? no absolutely very cool but no thanks it's been an education so i really appreciate you taking the time to tell us more um where can we find out more about hemp heroes and what you're doing yeah so you can find it on our website so it's just um www.hempheroes.com and you'll find me on linkedin at david hartigan and you'll also find us on instagram which is hemp heroes all in word very good cool well thank you very much david great good. to speak to you and uh, yeah we'll speak to you again soon take yeah, care thanks so much cheers bye-bye all righty stop that there